Monday morning, alignment-based hatha yoga. Oh, I'm going to put out my incense. It's pretty strong. So um, we're going to work on standing poses, some standing poses, but primarily focusing on what's happening with the feet. So whatever you have, even if you don't have a have a um, a ball, you can use like the edge of and just kind of get into some of the tissues in the sole of the foot. You can go sideways. Actually, that works really well for opening up between the bones in a foot. There are so many muscles that, that come from the feet and go up the side of the leg, come up the back of the leg, come up the inside of the leg. There's so much that's happening in the calf. It's unbelievable. And these muscles that come underneath the bottom of the foot, they act like a strap. So while you're doing that, they act like, for lack of a better term, like a boot strap. So I'm not sure, I'll put my foot up on this. They, they kind of act like this. They want to be doing this. And you can see, I think you can see, that as I do that, you can see how, how my foot lifts. So there's a, a medial arch here. This is a, a lateral outside arch here. And then there's another arch that goes across the front here through the front of the feet, and it lifts up it lifts up this way, so it's more across. It's the transverse arch of the feet. So do do a little bit on one. And then we'll just stop. So don't don't, don't change back and forth. Does anyone not have anything that they can use on their foot? Feet? Foot? I got so many dog balls I could share with you. <laughs> Laura, you must have something from Jersey. I don't know if she's a dog who likes balls. So get into the the, the many little creases I should be looking this way as you can in your foot. You can press hard, you can release, you have a golf ball. A golf ball is a little bit less forgiving, but it still is great to get into different places. Use the edge of whatever you have. Like I said, a block is good too. And notice if you have any sensitive areas. So I, I want to talk about today the, the, the concept of resilience. And especially, you know, I, I'm bringing up all these themes that have I think so much meaning while we are living through this experience. And resilience, I looked up a definition of it, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. Just let that sink for a minute. Like, what does that mean for you? The capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. It's like that, that bounce back ability. So you get in one, but you get right back up again. I think there's a song like that. Everybody's going to be singing that. Yeah, we're still on the same foot. See, Dean Huffman's here. <laughs> you can't. I don't know if you can hear him. Just another couple of breaths still. Working inside, working outside, working towards your heel. And then let's... Step off whatever it is that you got and stand and look at your feet. You know, say you've been walking around and then you stop and you see somebody and you talk to them. And then look down and where do your feet go? This is not just your feet. This is coming from your hips as well. So we're going to explore that a little bit. Is one foot further ahead than the other? Does one foot turn out more than the other? The foot that you just did what does it look like compared to the other foot? Is your arch, your medial arch a little bit flatter or is it more lifted? Do your feet look the same or do they look different? And what are the differences? Then close your eyes for a moment, lift your head up so it's balancing on top of the spine and lining up with a point between the center of each of your ankles. Can you get that sense? vertical and down to the center of the earth and when you line up that way 
where does your weight go in your feet? And what does the side that you rolled your foot on feel like? Not just your foot, but the whole side of the leg or the, the leg on that side, the whole side of the body, all the way up to your head. And what does the right or the opposite side feel like? We're just kind of checking in and saying, can I tell on this more subtle level the differences based on, you know, movement, massaging through the sole of the foot? waking it up. And it takes takes some time sometimes to connect with subtle subtleties. Okay, and then let's switch. So whatever you noticed is yours to notice. There's no right or wrong. Switch and come to the other side. So your feet are pretty resilient. Kind of where I'm going with this. <laughs> we can abuse them and we do um, a lot and they will bounce back. They will still carry us around everywhere. And sometimes patterns of movement um, will create dysfunction in the body. And so the, 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 the muscles of the feet and the lower legs, they can stop doing their jobs and causing some issues, pain somewhere in the body. But because they are so resilient, we can come back and have no pain and rework the pattern. But we can't get to it by doing the same thing we do over and over again. So the reason for, for tuning in on the subtle level is that that's where, it's, that's where the change is going to happen. I hear a dog barking. Are they our dogs? <laughs> they should be in the house. And then connecting to your, your own experience through life, through your ability to bounce back from challenges that you've had. Times when maybe you thought, well, that's, that's it, that's done, all is gone. It's not going to be the same way anymore. And you have learned how to do something new or different and changed a pattern. So we tune in on this really subtle level to, to find that. This is something you can do anytime during the course of the day. Notice, too, as you're rolling on one foot or as you're working with one foot, what you're doing with your other leg. Where are you standing? How are you standing on that foot? Where's your weight? So today, uh, you, you need something like a chair, a couple of blocks, um, but also a blanket. That's kind of a standard and some kind of a strap or... Um, Definitely uh, like a strap or a scarf or something along those lines. And when it feels like it's about the same amount of time, I'm kind of guessing it's close. If you want to go a little bit longer, you can go longer. And when you're ready, you can step off. And again, don't look how you're standing. Just kind of walk in place for, for a few steps and then stop. And before you open your eyes, Feel, do you have more weight on one foot than the other? Are you leaning more on one side than the other? You know, this is where we get into these imbalance, patterns of imbalance, when we start to lean more on one side. Other side is trying to counterbalance. We have this counterbalancing that's going on through the whole body. But if we come back and look at these very stable, um, resilient feet, 26 bones in each foot, lots of articulating surfaces, lots of muscles that run underneath the sole of the foot and want to lift up. Okay, so now look down and see how did you land your feet. Is there more awareness? And position your feet, it doesn't matter to me how close or far apart they are, but position them so that if you were to bend your knees, they point forward over the center of your ankle and towards the base of the second and third toe, so somewhere in that vicinity. So they're not coming narrow, and they're not going wide. 
And once you have that set up, just check in with how does that feel in your knees. You know, the knees are the the um, the poor innocent victim <laughs> when the ankles when ankles are not strong and hips are are tighter. The knees take the brunt of it. So we really want to make sure we're putting the knees in a position where they can be resilient too. It's not a very stable joint. Okay, then once you have that, stand where you are and lift your toes up. This is something we've done a hundred times. Lift up your toes until you feel the base of both of your big toes drop into the floor. So I, I know most of you know what I'm talking about, but just in case, this is the base of the big toe the head of the metatarsal. This is the mound of the foot. I'm not talking about the toes themselves. I'm talking about what happens below them. So the base drops down when you lift your toes. You might feel a sense of lifting through the inner arch as well. Keep your toes lifted, but now push from your inner thighs out towards your outer thighs without turning your legs either in or out. Just push as if there's hands right here widening. I think on Thursday I did the whole shins in, thighs out, so if you came to that class. So now by doing that, I can put more, I feel more weight leaning into my the outer edges of my feet. And in particular, I want a specific spot, the outer heel, because that's where the bone is, the foot. Now I feel like my legs are, are awake from my feet all the way up to my buttocks. I can feel my gluteus muscles engaging right here. Then... Keep that and lay your toes back down without shifting your weight either forward or back. And then close your eyes and balance your head again to a place, very center of the top of your head, lines up with a place exactly between your ankles on the floor and down to the center of the earth. I know it sounds kind of a weird esoteric kind of concept, but if you think about it, feel it, you can make that happen. And you can maybe even feel that sense of, of, of being drawn into the earth and how we have to create an energy that lifts up away from that. So the bony surfaces of the feet press down, that's the big toe base and the outer heel, in order to get the muscles to lift up, remember like the bootstrap. Okay, so now standing in Tadasana, you can open your eyes and inhale as your arms go up don't lose what you're doing with your feet. Don't lose what you're doing with your head. Keep it right where it is. So this is Urdhva Hastasana, upward flying hands. Notice if your rib cage has shifted and lifted forward. Notice if you're shrugging your shoulders. That's a whole other lesson on getting the shoulder blades to turn to create this movement. We want to get a sense that, yeah, you lifting your arms can help you with this lift, this feeling of lift in the soles of the feet and does it. Then we'll interlace fingers, turn the palms up, keep your elbows a little bit bent, turn so you're spinning your thumbs up towards the ceiling and pull your baby fingers down. I should be looking at you instead of <laughs> me. <laughs> and then press up, lengthening through the sides of the chest and the armpit, the outer arms. Lifting up from the points of the feet, big toe base, outer heel. And then we'll come back down. Okay, take one of your rolled up, or take one of your blankets. We're going to roll it up. I spoke too soon. We're going to roll it up. And have a little bit of play with the feet. Roll it up fairly tightly. Um, to, I don't know how, how thick your blankets are, but mine ends up being pretty thick. We're going to come and put heels up on the blanket and toes down. So I'll, if I turn forward, you can see I'm going maybe not as wide as the mat, but not together either. You can kind of see. So now this is asking the base of the big toe to drop into the floor more clearly. As you do this, again, line up your feet so that when your knees bend, when we will be bending the knees, your knees go in the center, towards the center of the ankle and towards the base of the second, third toe, somewhere in that vicinity. Now, root down through the base of the big toe. See if you can lift your toes up here. 
creates a little bit more um, action in the soles of the feet for sure. What you might find you do is start to lock your knees. So I'm going to say, as you lift your toes up, don't lock your knees. Get your knees to, to move forward slightly. Put more weight again now into the outer heels. So you feel active from your feet up to your hips. And then start to bend your knees in the direction that I was talking about. And then lift back up again. So as we bend down, we'll create a little bit of a counterbalance by taking arms forward and lifting back up. So pay attention to see if you shift your weight more towards the inside and your knees go further in, or you go more towards the outside and your knees go out. You know, changing patterns is really challenging. It can be, you can meet with resistance in your body and in your mind to change patterns. But when we are open to changing patterns in the body and the mind, then we become more resilient. We bounce back from things and we reinvent ourselves. So what you might be finding here is that, ah, I'm working my quadriceps. When you, when you bend this way and you track your knee in this way, you are working all four quadriceps in a really functional way. We have one on the outside, we have ones on the inside, and then we have a layer of two of them in the center. One of them, the top one, is also a hip flexor muscle. So we are shortening it at the hip flexors and lengthening it through the knee. We'll take one more and we're going to hold. Hold in semi-squat position for three breaths. As your arms are forward, there might be a tendency for you to kind of shrug and reach forward. So be lifted through the front of the chest. Drop your tailbone down towards the center of the earth here. So you start to tone a little bit more through the belly. Last breath here. Push down evenly through the balls of the feet and the outer heels and stand. Okay, awesome job. I'm just going to make sure my blanket's not unrolled too much. Now, take your other blanket or whatever it is that you have around. If you have a bolster, you can use a bolster. It's pretty thick. Again, for those of you who are local, I'm happy to um, deliver some props. I've, I've got, I just did my inventory yesterday, so I do have a bunch of blankets. And a few um, bolsters too, actually. Only have two foam blocks left. So this one's gonna go behind you, behind the backs of the knees. You gotta hold it there. You gotta figure out how to get into this position and then hold it there and sit back on it. So the feet are set up the same way, about the same distance. Lean into the base of the big toes. We'll be here a while. We can wait for you if you're still setting up, Susan. And Christopher. If at all, at any time during this, you, it bothers your knees or bothers your hips or any bothers, meaning it's pain, you know, there's, there's, um, there's a, a, an ability through the yoga practices to become more aware uh, of the differences in the sensations that we're feeling. So pain is that it's a, it's a sense of knowing that that's not right. Something's going wrong or about to go wrong. But a sense of resistance or challenge, muscles working, those are all different sensations that can be strong, but they're not pain. And they might be teaching us something. Everything has the possibility of teaching us something. So we, we root through the big toe base. I'm not asking you to lift your big toes or your toes away from the floor, but what if you could? Where, what would that do? Shift you back into your heels a little bit. And notice when you shift back into your heels a little bit, are you weighted more on the inside edges or the outside edges? And you can put more weight. Can you put more weight into the outer edges of the feet, into your heels? And then we'll inhale again. Arms come up. We want to stay lifted. If you need to, go wider or go with a bent elbow. 
The next thing about the bent elbow is it's a partial rotation of the shoulder joint, of the, uh, sorry, scapula. And if you're having issues, it's a good way to kind of bring back mobility, to get the, the scapula to, to bounce back. So otherwise, you're lifting, whatever, wherever you happen to be, you're lifting so that you can lift up to the center of the body. We'll take two more breaths. If you need to come out at any time, take two more, uh, come out whenever you need to. And then release and come back down. Hands to the floor. You can let the one drop out from underneath your knees and then step right off. Like, wow, we've done a lot already and we've hardly done anything. Set your feet up again. We'll keep doing this checking in. Check in to see how you feel from your feet through your legs. Definitely feel a lot of sensation through the backs of the legs. For me, I feel it in my calves, the top of the calves, the um, bottom of the hamstrings, some heat there in the backs of my legs. I can also feel like an energetic um, bubbliness now on the either side of my ankles. So just tune in and see what you're feeling. What's happening through the rest of the body? Because the body is connected through fascia and it's not isolated. Like, yeah, I can feel like I'm a little bit more open through my chest too. Then, We'll move these out of the way. Next stop is going to be on hands and knees. So if you need a blanket underneath your knees, you can put it down across your mat here. You know, um, most of you have been in my classes enough to know the, the variations. There's, there's cause and effect. There's never, never right or wrong. Everything has a cause and effect. So if you touch your toes, notice what that feels like. If you point your toes back, notice what that feels like. And just choose one of them for now, either pointing back or tucking. And either way, have awareness in your feet that they're not just sleeping back there. They're doing something. So if your toes are tucked, you're, you're tucking and you're pressing back through the sole of the foot. If you're pointing back, you're pressing your toe knuckles into the floor to create action in the feet. So either way, there's an effect in the fascia. And then just start to move a little bit. Let's move and flow wherever you want to go. You know, I like to shift forward and back because I'm arching and, and flexing the spine or flexing and extending the spine. You can also add in some side-to-side -side movements. I'm really loving the uh, serpent kind of movement because it gets me out of a pattern of moving more linearly. That's a word. You can wag your tail if, if that is an option for you. You can even start to walk your hands further forward and give yourself some space to let your hips come forward. But again, we're moving in such a way that we don't want to come into a, a range of motion where you're feeling pain, but we're just exploring what kind of movement. And if I go any further, I know I'm going to start to feel a pinching in my low back. So I want to resist going to that place there. You can also come right back into child's pose. You can change your foot placement. You can have more support from for the whole shin. Notice where you're feeling tightness in the body. And by working from the feet, we might be able to release some of that. And then I'm going to ask you to make your way back into child's pose. Whatever version of child's pose is going to serve you right now, to find a place of stillness. There is no pain. And the way you can decide if it's pain or if it's something else is pain, you're going to be counting the, the seconds until I tell you it's time to come out. You might feel that with, with uh, work as well or compression, but look to see what, how, how much do you want me to tell you it's time to come out? Or can you be present with the experience that you're having without it calling away? So we focus here in child's pose on breathing into the back of the body. You know, the soles of the foot, I've talked about the fascia that runs up from the soles of the feet through the back of the legs, through the back of the spine, all the way up to the sides of the neck, the back of the head, over top, and ends up right on the tops of the eyebrows. 
so by breathing here we are affecting that whole line we started at the feet we started to move up we're not just doing the back of the body we are creating flexion in the hips that will also give us some flexion in the low back if you play your cards right okay so now lift up walk your hands forward towards the front of the mat we want to make our hands be like feet so we want to lie them down so that the, the there's a uh, an evenness from the wrist through or from the forearm through the wrist to the hand spreading out through the thumbs and the fingers press down into your fingerprints then walk your feet or your knees back a little bit push down and forward with your hands so the same kind of an action of lifting through the arches of your hands needs to happen here. Not just the palm of the hand, but between the joints of the fingers. So if we press a little bit more into the fingerprints, we'll get these um, hastabandhas, these um, lift through the joints of the fingers. Then start to push down and forward until you can shift back. Again, being mindful of what you need for your shoulders. If you were going more like this, when your arms were up because of pain, you're going to go wider with your hands, maybe even go off your mat. Staying the mat is a bit of an arbitrary shape and size. <sighs> it's, not, it's not one size fits all. So if you need to go wider to give you more space in the shoulders, then great. So now we're coming back to an idea without the legs involved of length in the spine. Spine is long. But can you get a sense that your sit bones are lifting up and back as your hands press down and forward? Lengthening through the sides of the hips, the waist, the chest, armpits, arms. Can you lift your elbows away from the floor? Mm -hmm. So now we are learning what it feels like to lengthen the spine without the legs causing us any uh, challenge. But that's coming. You know it's coming. So then press down into your hands and instead of pushing forward, pull towards you to lift you up about not quite to a uh, table. So we're not bringing the wrists over the shoulders over the wrist. So in this position, so you can see your hands ahead of you. You're keeping length in the back of the neck. And once again, press down with your hands and forward and try to slide your knees back so that you create toning in your low belly, in the abdomen. Once you have that, then lift your knees off the floor. Keep pulling your knees back towards the back of the mat and slowly start to pivot around the shoulders. Bring your thighs towards your body and your body towards your thighs. Stay high on your toes so we get this extra bonus of stretching out through the soles of the feet. Okay, continue to do this and move towards, towards straightening your legs without losing this length in the spine. That was my computer making a noise, letting itself be heard. Yeah. So towards is not a destination, it's, it's a direction. The spine has got to be the number one thing. So just take another three breaths here, feeling what's happening from your feet up through the backs of the legs, the calves, your hamstrings, up through the buttocks, and then this lengthening through the spine. Okay, then slowly come back down. Tuck your toes under. So from table, if you tuck your toes under, I kind of walk my foot forward, tuck it, and then slide it back. So I'm going to try to get the maximum amount of opening I can. I, I know I have a tendency when I go like this for my heels to splay out to the side. So I want to be really aware that I'm working towards pushing back through the ball of the big toe. Then walk back. You may need to stop right here. Again, we're not going to go in the range of pain, but notice what the challenge is. We're changing patterns so that we can
stay resilient. Look, if your heels start to go out to the sides when you come back, draw your heels towards each other, the inner heels come towards each other. You may get to here, you may not. Just notice what it feels like. I also have a sense that my tendency, not only for my heels to splay out to the sides, but also for me to sit down. Because it's like, okay, I got here, now I don't have to do the work. But sitting down is going to cause more, more compression. So now can I push into my toes and lift up? I'm not trying to lift off my, my feet, but I'm trying to create a lift. Your hands can absolutely be down and you can come out at any time. Heels hug into the center. Ooh wee. <laughs> Bring your hands back down. Oh my goodness, slowly uncurl your toes. Let them just rest for a moment. Now the toes have flipped over. Tops of the feet are on the floor. I'd like you to find the same kind of action that you did when you were standing. So, and, and the pose you just did. So when we were standing, I asked you to lift your toes like this. We're gonna create an action that takes the top knuckles and presses them into the floor. So instead of it being this shape of the ankle, it's more of a pointed shape of the ankle. So feet are upside down. It's, it's kind of confusing. Because I'm saying do the same action, but your feet are upside down. So you kind of have, how do I do that? So I'm going to press my toes into the floor as if there are holes there, and I could push my toes down into the floor. And notice what happens in the ankle joint. If you need a little bit of a, a lift or support underneath the front of the ankle, take that. Especially if you're starting to get cramps in the soles of the feet. At all. So now we're working the top of the foot, pressing the knuckles down. It's going to be hard for me to see you guys, I know. Yeah, that's hard to see. <laughs> Plantar flexion with action. So now we're working the tops of the feet. And just for a couple more breaths. This is a strengthening. Strengthening in really great alignment. That brings the, the, the balance back to your, to your body. Okay, and then tuck your toes again. Walk your hands forward. We're finally getting to downward dog. That will hold. Press down and push forward with your hands. Lift your knees above the floor and pull them back to tone in your low belly. Keep doing that and start to pivot around your shoulders. Start to move your legs towards straight. Stop if your spine starts to, to change its shape. Readjust your legs. I'm going to go a little bit wider, and I stepped in just a little bit closer to my hands. Then release one heel down towards the floor and pull it back. So if you've stepped in dog poo and you're trying to pull your foot back to scrape it off, then change to the other side. Heel goes down, pull back. So we want this action to come from the, the muscles around the ankle and the foot rather than from the knee. So notice if you're just pushing your knee straight back. Get it to be like this dragging back of your foot, lengthening through the sole of the foot. And then hold on one side. Imagine that I'm standing behind you and I'm, I've got a strap around the front of your ankle and I'm pulling your ankle back. Not from your knee. And then change sides. Pull back through your, the sole of the foot. Pull back through the ankle. Okay, then we'll walk forward. Walk your feet forward. Blocks, chair, stool, whatever you need to be in a forward bend where your pelvis is tipping forward. So this is not, there's two phases to a forward bend. I think also on Thursday we did a little bit of that. If you were in the class, remember I talked about, we need to be able to roll the pelvis forward over the head of the femurs. So it's like this rolling aspect here, as opposed to the pelvis rolling backwards. 
So we need to go high enough that that can happen. If you don't have space, take your feet as wide as your mat, see if that helps, or wider if you need to. And then room for the pelvis to roll forward and the spine to be long. Now for some of us, we may start to feel the sensation of the backs of the legs. That, yeah, that's my, that's my hamstrings. There's three hamstrings, but there's also muscles that act like hamstrings as well, the adductor magnus, um, the gracilis, and what's the other one that I'm thinking of on the outside? So they're lengthening. The, the biceps femoris is definitely on the outside. So we're just going to wait. Wait where there's this, this sense of resistance and wait. If you're not feeling it yet, you can start to pour your body forward keeping the spine long, especially through the front of the body. Move yourself to the point where you are feeling that first point of resistance and pause there. Mm -hmm. And breathe. So check in to see, it's hard for me to see with everybody, but check in to see if the front of the body is long. So from the pubic bone up to the, to the top of the sternum and across the collarbones. I'd love for that to be spacious and long. So that means you're not reaching to something. You're high enough that you can stay wide through the collarbones. This just takes time. We've done so much great work with the feet and the ankles and the lower legs. Now we're getting into the upper part, which tends to get blamed for everything. Okay, bend your knees. Sit back into your heels. Look at your feet. Create action so that that's your foundation. We've got to rise up from the foundation, big toe base, outer heels, knees facing forward over the center of the ankle, the base of the second toe, and start to lift into Utkatasana. So arms can be perpendicular to your body, or they can be higher, they can be wider. What we don't want is to make the low back do all the work here, and we want to stay more neutral. So I'm going to tone my abdomen the same way I did moving into downward dog and hold here. So we're asking the muscles of the body, to really work together as a team. Yep. And last breath here. Press down into the bony parts of the feet and stand up. Awesome. Bring your arms down. Step your right foot forward. Step your left foot back and turn it out to the side. We're going to do a side angle pose to address a little bit different location in the legs and, and, and turn the feet so that they're do, doing different things. So when I'm lining my feet up, I'm lining my front heel towards the back of my arch, towards the back heel. And just, it's, it's a neighborhood. It's not an exact location. So it's gonna be different for, for everybody. We used to teach, I used to teach, to turn the pelvis completely to the side. But when I do that, I twist my front knee. Twisting the knee is not a good thing. It will not make the knee resilient. <laughs> it will make it weak. So we want to turn the pelvis, at least to start. Turn your pelvis until you can line up your knee the same way we did at the beginning. So that when you bend your knee, it goes towards the center of the ankle and towards the base of the second and third toe. Right, Dean? <laughs> okay, I've got that. I'm not going to worry about the back leg just yet, but I, at least I've got that. But also what's happened, I've turned my pelvis, my, the rest of my body is turned. So now I gotta keep my pelvis doing this, but I gotta turn from my rib cage back without using my legs. So this is what I see a lot. You can see what happened with my leg. So I gotta keep this strong and I gotta turn this way. Okay, just setting it up. As I start to turn my body more towards the side, now I can connect more with my back foot because I have an awareness back there. Big toe base on your left foot, outer heel on your left foot. So we create this action of rolling that left thigh away. 
we roll the right thigh away and we let the pelvis be where the pelvis needs to be. Lift your arms up. So we've turned the rib cage this way. Lift your arms up, going through warrior two. Take your hands a little bit higher than your shoulders so we can soften the upper trap. These, these annoying muscles right here that are doing all the work. I shouldn't say annoying. They get tight. They feel the stress of the situation. Now keep that start to lean forward. As you lean forward, don't lose the connection of the back foot. Keep your front knee lining right up over the center of the ankle and then lay your elbow on your leg somewhere. I say elbow so that you get as far out as you can. Again, depending on your torso. Length and arms. April, I'm still using anthropometry. <laughs> and I'm finding now in this position, I'm shorter on the right side of the body and longer through the, the top side. So I need a little more space. I'm going to take my back foot back. Play a little bit with it to see where do you get the opening that you want? Where do you feel the resistance in your legs? So now I'm rotating legs out away from each other. I've got my pelvis still turned where it needs to turn and I'm rolling my rib cage. Take the top arm up wherever it needs to be. A lesson I've taught a lot lately, you're rolling the right chest away from the right shoulder. Take your front knee so it's right over your ankle. Use your elbow too to help widen. And keep your focus on the back leg, big toe base, outer heel. Then press down into both feet, push them away from each other, and lift up, staying as low as you are. Back into warrior two. Awesome job, looks great. Slowly move your legs towards straight. Okay, turn your feet in. Since we create this big long step, I like to do it this way instead of trying to balance and move in. Okay, I'm going to move my blocks to the other side. Before we shift into the second side, I'd like you to just stand and notice. Again, set your stand however you need to stand and notice from your feet. We want to build strength in the feet and the ankles so that they act like feet. They act like ankles and everything that's on top of it rides, has ride. You know, your feet, the arches or the uh, muscles of the feet act like shock absorbers. We want that, especially when we do get nice weather, we're going to be outside more in bare feet. Okay, so now turn. Left foot forward, right foot back, turn, and find the alignment that you want to start with. You know, this is the great thing about, about an, a, a practice where we explore. You don't have to ever stay in the same place. You try this, you try this, you try this, and that's what helps to, to build strength in, a, in the body, strength, confidence in the mind. So again, find, that, find the angle that you need to be to, to really serve the front knee first. Yep, I can line up my knee over my ankle and see that my pelvis is turned this way. But I want to keep all that from the waist down and turn my rib cage towards the right. Now I want to have a little bit more awareness in my back foot. Remember pulling the, the, the center of the ankle back. I want to stay in my big toe base and my outer heel, but I don't want to push back through my knee. Now I'm starting to get a little bit more of a spiraling open through the, the, the front of my hip. Come up into warrior two, hands a little bit higher than your shoulders, and start to lean forward. Leaning forward, but not losing the connection. You are glued into your awareness of the back foot. Back foot stays down, especially the outer heel. Then you lean forward and then see, okay, do I have enough space? For me, I don't have enough space. I need to take a little bit bigger. I'm going to get my left sit bone to sit down a little bit. When I can sit down a little bit, I have a little bit more stability through that hip and leg. I'm pressing both legs away, and then you can adjust to where you want your arm to be. Maybe it stays on your hip. Okay. 
rolling away from your left chest or left chest away from your left shoulder. Lift up and lengthen through the left side of the body as much as you can. Notice if you feel any pain or pressure anywhere in your body that doesn't feel aligned. Work is different. I'm trying to establish that. Okay, so now press down into both feet, push them away from each other. Stay in this low position. Stay where you've set your hips up and legs up. Keep that action in your feet and come back into warrior two, bringing your, your body into alignment. Find a spot now on the top of the head, right down through the center of the body, through between the sit bones, right down to the center of the earth. You can turn your head forward too. Back foot connection, front foot connection. In externally rotating, rotating of the rib cage. Yeah, nicely done, beautiful poses. Okay, arms down. Turn your feet in, heel toe. Standing forward bend, blocks, chair. If you don't need props, that's okay. Before we go into standing forward bend, stand in Tadasana and close your eyes and notice what you've done with your body. We've worked up from the soles of the feet to the back of the body. We've worked up through the sides of the body. We've worked up a little bit to the inside of the for you, For those of you who were in the, my gentle class, talked about the liver. Liver stores anger. Working the inner side. It helps to have energy. Inner and outer will help to have energy flowing through liver and gallbladder. Okay, so steady in the feet, lift your big toe, or lift your toes up, big toe base drops down. Inner legs move towards the outer legs to engage through the glutes and to put weight into your outer heels. If you can, leave your toes lifted, but start bending your knees, staying centered exactly where you are. As you bend your knees, your hips go back, your body's gonna counter by going forward. Kind of moving through Utkatasana, our fierce posture, until you find your block. I'm going to bring my closer to me because I don't want to lean forward and shift my weight to the front of the feet. I want to stay centered. I want to keep my feet active. Then, once I have that, I'm still lengthening through the front of the body. Then I'm going to move towards straightening my legs. Direction, not a destination. I don't really care here if you're straightening your legs. Maybe your block height changes. We're looking for your ability to stay strong from the feet up through the legs and length from the pubic bone up to the top of the sternum and wide through the collarbones. Explore a little bit, where do you need to be? So Lisa, just lengthen the back of your neck a little bit more. Yeah, bring your head so it's, you have an awareness of your head in line with your spine. Nice. So Jacqueline, it looks like you're leaning a little bit more into your toes. Can you feel that? Yeah, just play, like go too far back, go too far forward, and see what happens. We go slow and then find, oh, that's where it is. Yeah, Lisa, you're a little bit in your heels. Ah, could you feel that shift? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah, okay, yeah, awesome. Okay, two more breaths here. Nice, Christopher. Put a little more weight into your outer heels. Press your inner thigh. Yeah, look at that. Awesome job. Okay, let's come down, come down to the floor. If you wanna stand up first and stretch, you can. We're gonna finish with treating um, each leg as a separate entity, instead of making them do the same thing in, in um, forward bend. Oh, it's Monday, I'm having trouble with words. Take, take your strap or whatever it is that you've got. 
lay down onto the floor. You can have a pillow if your upper back is, is rounded so that your chin is up. We want to be more level. We want to level the forehead and the chin here. Take your strap now. Let's go left foot first. Put it around the ball of the foot since I've been focusing on the ball of the foot. And we're going to do a crisscross here. Crisscross in front of the ankle, then around behind the back. If you don't have a long enough strap, then, then don't, don't bother with the crisscross behind the knee. You'll just keep the crisscross here. So we go crisscross in front of the ankle, back behind the knee. Remember uh, Chris, Doug Keller? This is a Doug Keller. And then, then let's bend the leg. Bend the leg. Hook your hands into the strap and root your shoulders back. So we align the spine with the floor so we have its neutral curve. My right leg is bent, my foot's on the floor. I'm gonna push forward through the sole of the foot and keep my, my thigh steady with the strap here and slowly move my leg from the knee to the foot towards straight. Again, straight is not all it's cracked up to be all the time. When you feel the resistance, stop. So we've got the support at the back of the knee to stop pushing from the back of the knee. So wherever you happen to be, you're gonna stay here and breathe. Notice while you're doing this, if your left hip has hiked up towards your armpit and that's shortening the side of the body. We wanna lengthen it by bringing the outer hip back down. Okay, so now take both sides of the strap. Let's re release the strap, but take both sides of the strap into your right hand. So I've uncrossed it. I wanna keep the left side of my pelvis down and bring my leg across. So here's, here's what it looks like if I lift my pelvis off the floor. You can see all this space here. Here's what it looks like if I keep my pelvis down. This stays down. So how far across you go depends on how, how can you keep your hip down. You know, my left arm reaching out to the side of a bit of a counterbalance. Press out into the outer heel, even though the strap's around the base of the, the ball of the foot, press the outer heel up towards the ceiling. You wanna elongate through the outer side of the leg. Then straighten out your right leg, bend your left leg, take your hand, so you can take the strap right off, bring your hand to the outside of your knee, and pull your leg across your body, rolling over, letting your arm and your body come, come with you until your left leg comes down onto the floor. So this might be different than what you're used to, just bear with me. By anchoring the leg here, we put the spine into an alignment that is really optimal for rotation. Left hand comes up behind the head. Now lay back, roll back onto your hand. I'm not worried about bringing my left shoulder blade down. I wanna keep my spine neutral and rotate through my rib cage. I also wanna notice if I'm shortening through the side of the body and roll this top hip away lengthening hip from armpit. I'm using my right hand to anchor, and I make a mental connection between my left elbow and my left knee, as if there was a resistance band that was going across them, and I move them away from each other. There's a lot of the muscles that start in the foot, so um, we'll come up the sides of the legs, but they also have connected fascia that go through the body. This is all the stuff that I've learned from Thomas Myers and the anatomy train. So these spiraling lines will be affected. Then slowly come back onto your side, lift up your left leg, 
until you roll back onto your back. Then stretch both legs out. Maybe stretch both arms out. And be in Shavasana just for, for 30 seconds, noticing the two sides of the body, the differences. The similarities. And what does it feel like from when you first came onto your mat this morning? Then bend your left leg, find your strap. We'll repeat all of that on the second side. So when I put the strap across the ball of my foot, I, I, I hope you can notice that it's not a straight um, horizontal line going across the foot. It's a bit of a diagonal line going from the big toe base to the baby toe base. Can you see that? It's not a straight across. I don't want to be squeezing my toes. I want to go right where the power is across that part of the foot. That's enforcing, reinforcing the, the arch that goes across there. Brisk across, take it behind. So for someone who's a little bit tighter in hamstrings, you can bring your leg a little bit closer to you. Hook into your hands. Pelvis is level. So this is this is really key. If you're tighter in your hamstrings and your low back, you might be lifting the back of the pelvis off the floor. We need to roll the pelvis forward. Same as that, that idea of rolling the pelvis over the femur. Then, you know, you can be here. You can start moving your foot away from you and in the direction of straight, moving from your knee to your foot until you feel the resistance in the back of the leg. It's going to be different for everybody. So you need to tune into your, and do you feel it more on the inside, more in the center, more on the outside? And look to see where, you're, where is your knee facing. We're going to come back to that. I, I, I can have my knee kind of facing over towards the left side of my face, but I can notice too that when I do that, my hip lifts up on this side. But if I turn my leg, and now face it uh, this way towards my right shoulder, I feel more length in the right side of the body. I'm more in line with the center of my ankle on the base of my second toe. Press up in through the ball of the foot into the strap, wherever you happen to be. Again, activating the arches of the feet. The more we can awake, awaken the muscles of the feet, that lead into the muscles of the lower leg, the more we will walk with stability and strength and have mobility, the more resilient we're going to be. Wherever you need to be here. Okay, release the strap. Put both sides of the strap into your left hand. I kind of wrap it, both sides wrap. And then I let my, the weight of my arm just pull down. So this is the, the part where we're not lifting the hip off the ground. We're going to keep the hip there. And to keep yourself honest, if you want, we can either put a blanket here or just put my right hand right here. And then as it go away, i got to stay in contact with my hand. I also don't want to be turning my knee. I want to keep it facing the same direction it's facing across. It, it, there's not a not a problem to turn it. Absolutely, you're just gonna get it's just cause and effect. You're just gonna get something different. So you know, I'm gonna renege on what I just said. Explore that. Keep pressing through the ball of the foot. Keep pressing through the outer heel up towards the the ceiling wherever it's facing. Maybe it's more, more bent. Then come back into the center. Straighten out your left leg. Take the strap off your right leg. Bend it. Left hand to the outside of your knee. Pull it across your body. As you go across, bring your right shoulder, right arm with you. Knee comes all the way down to the floor. Hook your hand behind your, your knee. I'll do it from the back this time left hand or right hand behind your head then roll back and lay onto your hands 
I'm using this like a bit of a karate chop, my left hand into the back of the knee, and I move my elbow and my knee, right elbow, right knee away from each other. North opens up through the top of the chest a little bit more, get a little bit more of that pec minor on a diagonal line. But you can play with it, maybe take the hand away. I'm going to suggest that you keep your hand higher than your shoulder so that you don't create this kind of a, an alignment. I'm going to keep open through the chest. You're all such great students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stay a little bit longer if you feel you need a little bit more. Otherwise, start to roll back onto your side first and lift your leg up until it tips you onto your back. And stretch out. Do a little Shavasana again. A short Shavasana. And then you can check in and see if there's something else I need to do. What would make me release with ease into Shavasana? Oh, hi, Suzanne. I didn't see you there. What would help you release with ease? Do you want to release your low back? Do you want to do a cat cow? Do you want to do a downward dog? Yeah, and then get what you need for Shavasana to be comfortable first time all class that I've invited you to be comfortable. <laughs> and that's on purpose. Being comfortable doesn't ask much of us, doesn't ask anything of us, except to be held, to be feel supported. I guess that's asking something. Dean's having some difficulties getting his pants on. <laughs> having that little bit of unfamiliar sensation, a little bit of discomfort, asks more in terms of your, your growth. Mm, that's not even true. <laughs> it asks... It asks it in a different way than being comfortable. And the yoga asana practice is is one that we we intentionally move into stressing the body in order to find growth. In order to find a way to balance the ease with the effort. So once you have settled in, see if there's anything else you need to do to be more comfortable. You need more support. Do you need an eye pillow? Then take a long, slow, smooth breath in. And an equally long, slow, smooth breath out. Mm. 
can do that as many times as you want and see how that has an effect on your physical body. I believe to become strong, re, um, redo patterns of behavior, rest is important. Your ability to rest and let go of everything we think we know in order for something new to arise. It'll be so incredible to see all the positive things that come out of this experience. People have reinvented themselves, found some new love or passion or skill, some new way of offering something to the world. Yeah, letting go is a big part of that. Hear the sound of my voice. I'm sorry it's not longer. But you can stay here longer if you wish. Stay as long as you want to. Stay as long as it feels like it's serving you to stay in Shavasana. But also, feel free to move in any way that serves you. You That's kind of an interesting concept. How do you know if something serves you? (laughs) It's a good contemplation. 
does it mean? If you want to sit up, you can come and sit up and sit up on something. If you want to stay laying, you can lay down, keep your, your awareness in the center of your chest, maybe even bring your hands there if you want. And if you do come to sit, bring your palms together in front of your heart. We are so blessed, aren't we, to be able to be doing this during this time together. You know, it's not what we used to do, but it's another way. And that's, that's the idea. We keep finding other ways serve us. Thank you for coming. Namaste.